Now you're hurling. Lorna Porca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford. The 15 men of Cork against 14 from Waterford. Waterford lead by one. The time is ticking down. Caught brilliantly by Ken McGrath. A match saving catch if ever I saw one. Wins a free, it's as good as a score. When you need big men, who better to call on than Ken McGrath? Superb catch by Ken. His dad did it in 82 and 83. His dad was disappointed in 82 and 83. Ken and Owen won't be today. So Ken McGrath captain Waterford to Munster glory in 2004 as the 14 men came away with a 316 to 121 victory over Cork and Torles. And delighted to say that the three-time All-Star from Mount Sion joins me on the line now. And uh, Ken, I'm sure all Waterford fans are looking forward to tuning into to TG Cahar uh, for this one on Sunday afternoon. Is this a game that you've watched back over and over again? Of course. Uh, I know I didn't watch it for a good few years, to be honest with you. I suppose, look, <laughs> in these are strange old times we're in. Uh, everyone be stuck in on Sunday and I'm sure there'll be a bigger crowd watching it you know so uh, no look it was a great game I, I, I said it's a good few years as I watched it uh, so look hopefully the younger kids might sit down and watch it they might see me playing <laughs> they don't even know that I played you know but uh, it's hard to believe it's uh, what it's 16 years ago now you know so time flies but it was a brilliant game absolutely brilliant game but I'd love to judge it now again um, and see how it would stand up with, uh, with the modern game I, I think it would I think it definitely would because um, it, was, it was so fast and uh, it was so such an intense game. It was, a, it was a brilliant game to play in, to be honest with you, you know. Yeah, like Ken, the, the pace of it was just a hundred miles an hour right from the the throw in. Like, what was it like to be in the middle of it all? Yeah, it was. It was like that, and it felt fast. Certain games uh, are not too bad. You get through them, no problem. But this game did feel real fast. And I remember it was the first time in a long time. I remember saying to Tony, "We want to slow things down because." Uh, it, it, they were pulling away from us a bit in the first half, but the game was non stop. It was, it, was, it was 100 miles an hour. I suppose back then it was a lot of one on one. You're marking your opponent, and that was it, really, you know. Uh, and that car team, they were the first probably team to play the short passing game as well, and were brilliant at doing it, you know. So you had to be on your toes. You couldn't leave a man out in front of you because they popped the pass to him. And that was quite unheard of at the time, the most, you know. Uh, but they were doing that with Benny, uh, Ben O'Connor, um, Jerry O'Connor, uh, Tom Kenny midfield. They were coming. coming Waves there, you know. So, uh, no, it was a brilliant game. It definitely was a game. I remember thinking the first half, this is this is, this is actually some match, you know, uh, which don't often happen. You're often kind of just kind of focus on the game. I remember, I remember the second half, I think Jerry O'Connor got a brilliant score in the second half. Uh, he, he done it. There was a couple of one twos in the middle of the field up, 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 under the old stand and put it over the bar. I remember going back up to the centre back saying, gee, that was some score, you know. Uh, like, there were scores unbelievable in that game. And you mentioned the man-to-man duels there, Ken, and you marked Niall McCarthy that afternoon, a player that you yeah. had many ding-dong battles with in Semple Stadium yeah. and Crow Park as well. What sort of an opponent was he? He was tough. He was he was, he was big. He was big enough. He was fast. Uh, he was he was aggressive. And uh, no, I I always enjoyed marking him. And I suppose he probably felt the same. We 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 just have a right cut up on her, like you know, and it'd be it'd be. Just honest, honest old uh, duel you'd have with him, you know. You turn on her, there'd be no talk, there'd be no mountain, you just play away. Uh, but he had to understand his mark on him. And uh, they enjoyed his mark on him because at times you could leave Noel out in front of you. He wasn't probably the best fellow to score at times, but he he, was, he he would win ball and he'd cause havoc. But I, I enjoyed probably sitting back a small bit and sweeping a bit, you know. Uh, but against Cork, you'd have to be probably push up your opponent more because. The midfielders would give the ball to the centre forwards, you know, where other teams wouldn't did up. Most teams at times were going long, and you could sweep up behind Tony or uh, Brian Freeland was left half back that day, you'd sweep up, you know. But the car lads would have to be ready because they could pop that pass or, or, or they go long. So it, you're always on your toes playing against them. And don't look, Cusick on the goal as well, then. Like, it wasn't just a straightforward look the ball down, you know. So, uh, no, it was good. And, and, and look, uh, we marched our probably seven or eight times over the years, I'd say. Uh, and, and we can great old tossers, you know. And look, I, I still get on well with him now. He's a, he's a lovely friend off the pitch as well, you know. And and you moved to centre back that season, Ken. You were man of the match against Clare in in the first round of the Munster Championship. How did that switch come about? No, no, enjoyed it. Uh, I remember I was, I was seven or eight, seven years probably centre forward, wing forward, centre forward. So uh, I'm back for the second part of the league. The league was broken up into two sections that year. Uh, got to the league final. Uh, we were pulled off from the league final up against uh, Galway up in Limerick but we, we were all ready for the championship you know and Justin had his kind of prime for the championship and I was back centre back centre back was my clear game was, was my first game actually centre back I was wing back in the league and I loved it settling straight away and I loved it and uh, I had my best probably four or five years easily playing County Hurling you know mm, and, and you produced a couple of big plays 
that day, Ken, the first one I wanted to ask you about was the points. I think from your in, well inside your own half. Um, did you go for it or were you looking to put it in around the square? No, I went for it. I went for it. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it dropped short, I'd say I went. No, I went for it. And look, I suppose now that the, the, the lads are doing that, no bother nowadays. The ball team. I don't know where the ball is traveling farther or the lads are hitting the ball uh, further. But uh, now that wouldn't be. You, you see that regularly in, in matches, you know. Uh, but no, I caught it nice. It was fun. That way. Uh, anyone that knows Torres and played after playing Torres, you know that's a kind of scoring goal at the town end, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I felt confident having, having a pop off it and I went over, thanks to God. Um, no, look, every point kind of mattered that day. Um, and look, every score was huge. And Dan, Dan Chan got around three or four points in the first half and a goal. And, and he kind of kept us in as he was brilliant wing forward that day, you know. Uh, and really kept us in as when we were kind of struggling in the first 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Dan kept us going, you know, and every, I said every score was huge, and uh, that was a great score to get, you know. Yeah, and uh, I suppose I'm going to ask Paul Flynn later on about that tipper in the second half, but towards the end of the game, um, your catch o- over Dermot O'Sullivan is one that all, every Waterford fan fondly remembers, Ken. Um, you said after the game in the post match interview that uh, the ball never felt so good in your hand. Um, can you talk us through that passage of play? Yeah, yeah I remember, um, I think. I, we had a free, we were in free under from the left half back, and I hit a free, uh, and and Cork let the, yeah, it's Cork worked, worked it back out uh, in front of the old stand again, and I slipped up behind Brian Field, and, and I actually cleared the ball in too far, and I actually hit it too well against the breeze, and I cleared all the lads in the forward, and we didn't pass the, the full back. Uh, I think Ronan Corn was back there at that stage, and um, I think by Murphy slipped up, gave it to Ronan Corn, and he, he kind of played it straight back down the middle. Um, and I was back into the back at that stage, and for some reason I saw Jim Sullivan there. I don't know why he was even up there at that stage, but I suppose obviously he was trying to go for it. And, uh, no, I knew it was the ball you had to win, and look, there are certain plays and matches, there are certain balls in, in big matches, you know, I have to win them. Uh, and I always enjoy that over my career. And I knew that, I, I, I often thought about certain things in games, and I remember that time saying, I have to win this ball, and, and that was it, you know. Uh, the kid, look, it was a grand catch, it wasn't an unbelievable catch or anything, but it was a good catch in the circumstances because if, if the ball went through me, it was a score, you know. Uh, you know ben O'Connor, Jerry O'Connor was lurking there. Uh, but, no, look, thankfully, look, the ball, I, I grabbed it and I, I knew straight away I had to win a free. I knew I was going to get a free nearly because normally you do in them, in them uh, circumstances. I went out to Tim McCarthy and I went down fairly easily enough uh, and got the free. And look, it was, it was a brilliant feeling knowing that the game was up. Uh, it was one of the best wins I had playing, to be honest. With you. And and what was that win extra special on a personal level, Ken? Because your your dad Pat had lost two months of finals to Cork in eighty two and eighty three. Well, look, it was it was special, I suppose. Look, because we were going up. Uh, look, Cork were doing that doesn't do much for finals. Waterford, and to me, they were always the benchmark. Uh, even when we were young, start off, you'd be playing against Cork teams. You'd say there was the Cork lads, and they all looked well. Always looked well in their gear, and their, do you know what I'm saying, Thomas? And yeah. We were always yeah. kind of holding the game to that kind of bracket and to be the Cork were always I suppose I think they the most all Ireland uh, before uh, that British Kenny team came along and th- to me they were always the kingpins and we're after beating Tip and Munster final uh, and, and 2004 felt big because we wanted to prove that we weren't just the one flash kind of team that we were uh, we, we were there to be the team that wanted to do something more and, and, and compete in, in matches every year you know so uh we Cork Bettis in 2003 again we kind of threw away uh, so to come back and beat more four in, in, look it was a brilliant match uh, a lovely day 55, 60 other people at it it was a uh, look of all special in all fairness you know and, and what do you remember about uh, the post-match celebrations that followed? Uh, Monday was a good day right <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no no it was great look we, uh, back then we used to walk down through the square and maybe stop for a point or whatever and uh, we were at the Anna Hotel and I remember it was a great buzz, a great buzz that day, because it was a super match, and we felt, look, the 2002 felt like, I suppose, huge, because it was the first time doing it in so long, you know, but this honestly did feel like, right, we won it, we deserve to win it, we're, we're up there with these lads now, let's drive on for the semi-final, the final, so it felt slightly different, but we did know it was a massive game, you know. And, and just a final one uh, for you, Ken, you've been very good with your with your time today, um, yeah, I suppose sure. everybody's been in, impacted by the coronavirus and the instri- restrictions that have been imposed um, how do you see the, the rest of the hurling year panning out? Yeah it's hard to know it's hard to know uh, look I suppose we just have to look everyone a lot of people are saying they're bored and, but look we could be a lot worse uh, you, you see what's happening over in England and Italy and Spain 
Uh, we'll have to deal with the government of Hellas and look, I, I don't know if there's going to be games go ahead. Hopefully we see a bit more uh, uh, normality in the next few weeks by easing off the regulations and we might, try, might go back to work and cafes and restaurants and missing them home. I don't know about mass crowds and big crowds going to matches. I don't know. Uh, hopefully uh, in the next few months they, if, if you, won't, you won't see that that we had last year with the four games. That won't happen anyway. Uh, if anything is good, I'd say the knockout championship, which which for one year it might create such an excitement that it involves it could be brilliant, you know. But uh, that's hard to know. I was only talking to someone about it the other day. I was saying, you just feel sorry for, for county lads or even club lads trained like, for months, especially county lads who have themselves in such condition and then not knowing where they stand. It's very hard, you know. Um, once or twice that happened in your prior games, I call loss. I'm going to change this disaster. I'm going to. You know what to do with yourself from that day, or this is going on for weeks. So, God knows how they feel, you know. Uh, mm. But look, it could be a lot worse once we uh, we try and keep that down as much as we can in the country, and hopefully, not as many, uh, too many families are affected by it. Which is true, you know, because at the end of the day, that's that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, Ken, absolute pleasure. Talk to you today as always, and thanks for taking our call. No hassle. Glad to be painting. Thanks, the most. <laughs> <laughs> We're in injury time. 30 seconds to go. Waterford leading by a point. Waterford attacking. Pressure on Wayne Sherlock. Cork have got to try and score here. First of all, they need to get the ball down to Ronan Curran. The referee has a look at the watch. Says play on. Ken McGrath makes a fantastic catch. That could be a match winner in its own for the 14 men of Waterford. What a day. What a match. Now you're hurling, Lorna Porca, with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Thanks to PWC Waterford.